cab over engine design, a powerful diesel engine, excellent driving performance, and improved driver comfort. The appearance of the MAZ500 trucks at the Minsk automobile plant was a real revolution for the Soviet automotive industry. The new cab over trucks matched the global automotive trends of the time, where trucks with the cab above the engine were gaining more and more popularity and becoming widespread. In the mid-1960s, the USSR introduced the MAZ500 design, which was successful even by global standards. Before the MAZ500 appeared on the roads, the flagship model of the Minsk plant was the 200, which had been produced since 1947. Of course, the engineers understood that transporting cargo over long distances required a completely new model. That's why, in 1958, work began on an entirely new design, it was envisioned that the future tractor unit would become the base for cargo transportation, which meant the design with the engine under the cab and a factory installed sleeper berth. Almost immediately after the project began, the Belarusians managed to prepare the first prototypes, which were essentially 200 models with a new driver's cab. The design of the cab itself was partially based on the American International V-Line. Sometimes the Japanese Mitsubishi Fiesso T380 is also mentioned. But over time, the Belarusian design acquired its own original shapes. Overall, the research and development process was quite lengthy, since pre-production only began in 1963, and mass production officially started in March 1965. So why was the design of the MAZ-500 so successful and innovative for the Soviet Union? It's worth starting with the most important thing, the placement of the engine under the tilting cab. This solution was especially impressive at the time, being something new not only in the Soviet Union, but also in many other parts of the world. In the United States, they had been used since the 1940s, but the first European truck with such a cab only began mass production in 1962. That was the CCKB-112. The cabin of the 500 was also quite spacious and fairly modern, mainly thanks to the presence of three full seats in the front and a sleeping area located in the rear part. The driver's seat had several adjustment ranges, and the passenger seat featured a high, comfortable backrest, which, together with the standard power steering, ventilation, and heater, was real luxury by Soviet standards. As for the overall design, the MAZ500 was built on a traditional, very sturdy frame intended for use on poor quality roads. The suspension was also interesting, featuring another innovation, telescopic shock absorbers. However, the real breath of modernity was the engine. We're talking about the four-stroke YMZ236 diesel engine with a displacement of 11.2 liters, which produces 180 horsepower. For those times and circumstances, this was a respectable and solid result, and even the fuel consumption of 22 liters per 100 kilometers should be considered decent. Moreover, the very fact of using a diesel engine was a big advantage at a time when most Soviet trucks were still running on gasoline engines. However, at first, the MAZ revealed two significant problems. First of all, its drawback was its width of 2 meters and 65 centimeters, which meant the Belarusian truck was not allowed to be used on roads outside the Soviet Union. In addition, at first, a 5-speed gearbox from the Model 200 was used, which resulted in a rather low maximum speed, 75 kilometers per hour. Fortunately, the engineers almost immediately began making adjustments, which resulted in the debut of the slightly modernized MAZ500A in 1970. This series was distinguished primarily by its reduced width of 2.5 meters and modified gear ratios, which made it possible to achieve a quite respectable maximum speed of 85 kilometers per hour. In addition, the wheelbase was slightly extended and the payload capacity was increased to 8 tons. Drivers loved the MAZ500 not only for its comfort, but also for its relatively good performance and high reliability. A particularly interesting feature of this model is that it could operate normally even in the event of a complete failure of the electrical system. It's no surprise that the 500 series quickly became the backbone of the Sovtransavto fleet the Soviet state carrier responsible for international transportation, including to Western Europe. Now let's take a look at the modifications that were produced. 
MAZ500SH, the standard two-axle chassis for superstructures. MAZ500V, the military version with a metal body. The civilian version initially had a wooden one. MAZ500G, a version with an extended wheelbase, designed for transporting long loads. MAZ500S, a variant for operation in Arctic regions, featuring additional thermal insulation and cabin heating, as well as a headlight that serves as a spotlight. MAZ500U, a version prepared for operation in hot regions. MAZ505, a limited production version with four-wheel drive. MAZ503, a factory-produced dump truck. MAZ504, a two-axle tractor unit. MAZ509, an all-wheel drive, timber truck, variant. MAZ516, a three-axle version with a drop axle. In addition, prototypes of vehicles were also built based on the 500 series. One of the most interesting, without a doubt, was the three-axle MAZ520 with two steerable front axles and one drive axle. This solution, which was once widely used in Germany and Italy, was a response to very specific tonnage regulations. However, drawbacks such as poor handling and reduced off-road capability eventually led to the project being abandoned. Throughout its entire production period, MAZ carried out only one major modernization in the mid-1970s. It was then that the headlights were moved to the bumper and turn signals were installed in their old place. This particular change was a result of provisions contained in new UN regulations, which established uniform rules for all countries regarding the height and installation method of automotive lighting. In addition, a slightly newer instrument panel was used. Since then, the designations have also changed, turning the 500 series into the 5000 series. The basic versions with a short cab were equipped with a 180 horsepower engine and a 5-speed gearbox right up to the end which was already a very poor showing by the late 1970s. Later tractors and chassis with a long wheelbase, however, received more powerful V8 engines ranging from 265 to 300 horsepower and new 8-speed gearboxes. Thanks to this, the MAZ could still operate on intercity routes, for example, at the Sovtransavto company. After the changes mentioned above, the MAZ500 lasted throughout the entire 80s, and the last unit rolled off the assembly line in 1990, giving our hero a continuous 25-year career. Many units also stayed on the roads even longer, becoming the subject of the distinctive tuning trends of the 90s.